C-Rec class today. Today we're going to work on our muscles again. We're also going to warm up using the same muscles that we're going to use in the workout. So before I get into my preliminary health talk, I want to ask you to grab a few things. You're going to need your um, weight gloves if you decided to use those and get those. Don't have to have them, but they would be helpful if you're going to use weights to avoid calluses getting on your hands and on your fingers. You're also going to need your high back chair, a stool, or a step that's accessible to you so that we can use that during our workout. We're mainly going to be working on our back muscles, but of course, as you know, even though we concentrate on one area of the body, it still allows us to work other areas of the body as well, or use other areas of the body as well. We're going to need a mat or a beach towel or something on your firm, flat surface that will give you some type of cushion so that you feel comfortable when we get down on the floor. You're also going to need your weight option. So for me today, I have my dumbbells with my two plates on the end. I have approximately hmm, eight pounds between the dumbbells, so 16 pounds total, and that's what I'm going to use. You don't have to use that much weight. Know that if you choose to use something other than a dumbbell, then you can use something equivalent to two juice bottles, two two-liter bottles filled up with water, or two unopened two-liter bottles. You can also use um, jugs of oil, or if you wanted to just try something on the lighter side because you're not really sure how it's going to go, you can try your canned goods. Also, if you um, wanted to use something other than a weight, then you could use a resistance band. So at some point in time, I'm probably going to use my green resistance band up here. And that's between my red, that's, it's the one in the middle. It's not the red one, which has the least amount of tension, or the blue one, which has the most amount of tension for, for my set. But it has the, the medium amount of tension. Um, if you don't have a resistance band, then remember um, we talked about using a belt that you're no longer going to use again. Um, it might be a little bit restrictive. Um, so we decided to, and we also talked about using pantyhose. Um, pantyhose that, or knee highs that you tie together to fit the length, about arm's length, so that you can put it underneath your feet to do some of the exercises that we might do, or so that it can extend almost the full length of your body or half the length of your body for when we get ready to do exercises using resistance bands. So those are just some things that you, you may need for this workout. You don't have to have equipment. You can do it without equipment, but it could help you to build up your muscles um, as we do this workout today. All right, don't forget to consult with your healthcare physician prior to changing or starting a new exercise regimen. We want you to be safe. We want you to make sure that you're taking good care of your body. So we don't want you trying anything that makes you feel completely uncomfortable. If anything during this class makes you feel uncomfortable, please stop. Please take a couple of deep breaths. Rest. If you then recover and you feel like you can press on and continue with the, with the workout, then do so. But if anything starts to feel a major discomfort, then you need to consult your physician. Please note that when we're starting something new exercise-wise, it's going to hurt just a little bit. You're going to feel some muscles awaken that you may not have felt before. And at first, you might think something's totally wrong. But after resting, you may feel fine. And then you realize when you do the exercise again, you feel the same way you did before, which is maybe fatigue or a certain part of the body hurts, the part that we're working. That is a natural response. But if you feel that, you know the triggers of your body. If you start to feel like extremely fatigued, if you start to feel dizzy, if you start to um, lose the function or mobility of certain muscle groups or muscles, or if you feel you have a very strong uh, feeling or, again, major discomfort in your muscles, your joints, or your ligaments, then stop the exercise, have a seat, Take a couple of deep breaths, drink water, and join back in if you can. And if you can't, then don't do that exercise, and please consult your physician. Please check us out on all social mediums to include our YouTube channel as well as our Instagram page. 
Um, don't forget to wear comfortable clothing when doing this class to include shoes, working your way up to bottoms, and definitely a comfortable um, fitting and supportive top. All right? Definitely have water ready. And if you want to play music in the background while we do our workout, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay? All right. So we're going to start off with a warm-up. We're going to do a very short warm-up. Not too short, but short enough so that we can get the full workout in. And do know that when we're doing our workout, um, if you're doing a strength exercise or a strength workout, then you don't have to run a mile and get really warm in the body for the muscles that we're going to be working. However, however, it doesn't mean that you skimp on the warm up at all. So I just want you to know we may not do three rounds for this warm up, but we'll probably do one round of exercises and then we'll probably do a nice little stretch before we get right into our workout. So if you're ready, then so am I. And we're going to start marching in three, two, one, march it out. And you can make this low impact or high impact, however you want. It's your workout. Just remember to pull your belly button in. If you wanted to alternate, you could do that as well, okay? Mix it up just a touch. And breathe. Don't forget to breathe. We're going to try to do each exercise for a full minute. Good. And if you want to take it down to low impact, then you can. You got about 30 seconds to go or less. 20 seconds. 15. And 10 seconds. 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Let's kick it forward. Kick it forward. forward and don't forget you can alternate so if you're going to alternate then get your arms out the way and lift and kick don't lean with it okay so just showing you from the side come up to at least waist height if you can if you can't keep it down here a little further off the floor a little higher off the floor then do so. We have about 15 seconds to go. 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's squat it out. So get your feet wide, at least shoulder width apart. Bring your arms up as well. And let's sit down and stand up. Okay, so you can squat down and come on up. Now, I was thinking in my head, <laughs> if you wanted to do an alternate or a regressive, then you can come to your high back chair and do sit to stands instead, okay, with your arms up. So it look like this. Sit down, stand up. Good, okay. Or you can stay with traditional squats. Almost five seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. Hands on your hips and let's do some squats, some lunges. All right. High lunges or 90-90. So step for your high lunges. Just a simple step forward. Split stance almost. A little bit in the front knee. Back leg tends to stay a little bit uh, longer with no bend. If you want to do your 90-90 lunge, then do so by dropping the back knee as well. And when you do good quality lunges, you're going to feel a nice stretch in the front of the leg, okay? The regressive lunges, 
you don't feel as much of a stretch. But they're not bad lunges, okay? So good quality 90-90 lunges not only warm you up, but give you a stretch in the front of your thighs. And three, two, one. Good. Let's hinge it. So hands on the front of the hips and roll your hands down. Stretch in the back of the legs and roll up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Again. Good. 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Let's come on down to our mat and let's do our cat pose, okay? So, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, and we're just going to round back. Inhale the flat back. And exhale. Inhale. And make your back flat, okay? And spine nice and long. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, two more, feel the stretch between the shoulder blades, last one, nice, now take your right knee, and your right leg, actually, and kick it forward between your hands, okay? In a 90-degree angle, place both your hands on the inside. You'll feel a nice stretch on the inner thigh because your shoulder is pushing against the knee that's in front. And you're going to take your outer hand and swing it up, opening up the chest. And just breathe. Again. Good. Now take the arm that's up in the air and bring it forward, pushing through the fingertips. Palm is pressed into the mat. Head, or excuse me, your gaze is looking down at the mat. And just breathe. One more. Good. And let's switch the parts out. So we're going to kick our right leg back and our left leg forward. Both hands on the inside of the leg. And we're going to feel the pressing of the left shoulder against the left knee. And we're going to take our right arm and swing it up, opening up our chest. Opening up the muscles in the back, upper, middle, and lower back. And breathe. Arms come, come overhead, fingers push forward through the tips, and breathe. One more. Very nice. Bring that arm down and place that knee back underneath the hip. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to Get into our plank position, and we're going to hold our plank position. Remember, the options are elevated on the bench, hands on the bench, feet on the floor, okay? We can also come to the mat where our hands are on the mat, feet on the mat, okay? And we can also come to knee position. So we come to a full on plank position, 
Then we simply drop our knees here, so we're in the, in the best position, so it's a regress plank, plank. And then we can also come down to our elbows with our legs extended, okay? So an elbow plank. So you decide which option works best for you. We're gonna do a couple rounds of this plank. So make sure it's something that you can stick with. That is the goal for today. If you have to regress and drop back to an option that is of lesser um, force on your body, then feel free to do so. So if you start off on with an elbow plank and you find that you'd rather have your knees down, then come up to a hand plank and drop your knees, okay? That's still a regression, but it's not that far of a regression. So you start out with a bit of a progression and you did a regression, and that's okay. We're building up here, all right? We're gonna do a couple rounds of planks, so get excited. No moaning and groaning, get excited. Say, yay, whoopee! All right, <laughs> tuck your toes. Come into your plank position, make sure your feet are at least hip width apart, palms are down, fingers spread wide, and let's hold, just a 15 second hold. So if you wanna count, you can count. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Drop your knees. You can also sit back into what's called a child's pose and breathe. Take a couple of deep breaths before we do it again. Inhale, exhale. Don't forget when you come to that reset with the child pose or that recovery pose, the child's pose is the recovery pose that you take full inhales and full exhales, okay? Giving your body that rest that it needs before we go back into the work. So now we transition out of the warm-up and we're transitioning into the workout. Do you see how I did that? We didn't stop in between. We're kind of just gliding on through that, okay? You can do the very same thing in your own workout. All right, back to plank position. Any plank you want. And hold. Count if you want to. Or just breathe and focus. Make sure you're looking straight down between your hands. You've got three, two, one, knees down, child's pose. Look at that, that's two sets. Okay, really glide and push those glutes down as close to the heels as possible. Inhale, exhale. Very good. All right, we're gonna come to our third round, our third round, okay, are you ready? Just 15 seconds, you can do it. Hands underneath the shoulders and tuck your toes, lift your knees up and hold. Starting now, 15 seconds. Breathe. Good. You got it, you got it. You got five, four, three, Two, one, drop your knees, child's pose. Very nice. All right, let's crawl it in. We'll come back to planks later on in the workout. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a seated row. You're going to sit on your step, your bench, or your high back chair. You're going to sit up nice and tall. If you haven't already done so, put your workout gloves on if you have them, or position yourself where you're comfortable, okay? Make sure there are no tripping hazards around you, your, your chair, your bench, your step is set up for you to sit on, and you have your weight ready to go. Okay, so I have my weights ready. And just to let you know, the back muscles are just as important as the front muscles, okay? Your upper body is just as important as your lower body. Your whole body is working together as a unit 
to keep you functioning well. So it is very important that we work all muscles, not just the ones that we want to look very nice in our summer outfit or look streamlined in that pose or that picture that we're gonna take over the holidays. So work every muscle part, every part of the body as often as you can and as much as your body will allow you to do it within reason. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start off with the weight. Now, you may remember last week when we did our row, we did a one knee row on the bench. And what we basically did was we put a knee on the bench. And when we did our knee on the bench, or had our knee on the bench, rather, we had one hand on the bench as well. And we picked the weight up and pulled it back. Okay, so the weight came down and then we pulled it back, elbow back into that row. Well, you can do a row as well when you're sitting down. And when you do the row, it's kind of, a, of an awkward move. Um, so with that being said, when you do it, if you don't feel comfortable, we can always change it to, from this position, this row position, okay, to a bicep curl, all right, a seated bicep curl. And when we do a seated bicep curl, we can do one weight at a time. We're sitting up nice and tall, and we're gonna curl that one weight at a time before switching arms. This is why if you don't have weights or dumbbells, you can always use a household good to do this exercise because we don't need to work both sides at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna switch to my other arm. I'm gonna prepare. I'm sitting up nice and tall. I have my legs out a bit. They're li my ankles are a little bit beyond my knees, and my weight is just resting on my knee or my thigh at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna turn my palm up so I can pull the weight back this way as opposed to pulling it back this way. All right, so you saw me demonstrate with my arm down and then I pulled it up this way but I'm actually going to extend my arms and pull it back so that my elbow comes back front to back with my palm up, all right? So my arm is out, make sure you can handle your weight and you're gonna pull it back. Extend it, pull it back, okay? Showing you from the front side, keep going if you started, pull it back. Extend and pull back. Inhale, exhale. Good, all right, let's switch to the other side. So what we're gonna try to do is, depending on how heavy your weight is, you can do a few reps on one side before switching to the opposite side. For me, I did about five on one side as a demonstration, and I did five on the other side. And now you can also do another set of five with me. So pick up your weight for your left side, which is where I'm gonna to go to now. Extend that arm, pull it back. Inhale, exhale, two more, one more. Good, it's kind of like you're giving someone something but you're taking it back, okay? And what we're doing is we're working the muscles in the upper back here and coming down towards right where for females where the bra line is or um, just beneath the first rib of the rib cage, okay? All right, here we go, second set excuse me, the end of the second set, five sets or five reps on this arm. All right, here we go. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more. Good, and bring, put that down. All right, remember, you can do that row where you're pulling the weight up here at the side, long way, or you can extend it out and bring it back for a row that way as well. Now, I wanna show you where if you don't have a dumbbell, you can also place your homemade resistance band with your pantyhose tied together underneath your feet, okay? And you can take the ends of your pantyhose. Here I have handles, but if I didn't, I would hold the ends of my pantyhose and I would cross them in the front. So I have my bands underneath my feet. 
I have crossed them in the front with an X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them out to my side, to the side, and I am now going to grip them in a way where my thumb is up and my pointer finger is down, and I'm going to pull back. Okay, squeezing my two shoulder blades together, okay? So at the same time, extend your arms out and pull back. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, okay? Let's do two more. Let's do one more. Okay? Now, again, when doing these exercises for the back, sit up nice and tall, don't hunch, okay? Sit up nice and tall, and sit up in a comfortable position. Now, I'm gonna show it to you in case you have handles, or maybe you made some handles with the end of your pantyhose, loop them together. And what I did was, because of my height, I'm a little bit shorter, then I'm going to wrap it one more time so I have enough tension. If you find you're a little bit taller than me and crossing the bands in front is just a little bit too much, then you can uncross them and do the same exercise, okay? But for me, I am going to wrap them once, do the same exercise. So pull and extend. Three more. Push out and in. Last one. Good. And rest. All right? All right. Now we're going to transition into a exercise you can do with just your high back chair, step, or bench. And they're called dips. Now, dips, you don't need any weight to do dips. However, if you progress to the point where you choose to use the weight, you can use a plate or maybe even a book at home, a very heavy book, a coffee table book, um, and place it on your lap, and that can add some additional weight to you for your dips. When you're doing your dips, the first thing you must remember is you must have a good grip on the bench, chair, or step that you're using, okay? So, for me, my hands, palm down, are going to be on the bench, nice and secure. My fingers are going to curl over the edge, okay? And what I'm going to do now is before I do any, before I just do the exercise, I'm going to prepare myself by taking my toes up and putting my heels down, and I'm now going to walk it out so that my bum slides off of the bench. My glutes slide off of the bench but my back is not far from the bench, okay? So I walk it out, so I am off of the bench, elevated off of the bench, applying pressure to my hands, and then when I get ready to do my dip, all I have to do is slide, it's as if I'm sliding down the front of the bench, bend my elbows, and push up, okay? Inhale, lower down, exhale, push up, inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale, let's try one more, inhale, exhale, and then come and sit down. Now, when you do dips, you don't have to do much to really feel it. You're going to feel it in the back of your arm, in the top of your shoulders. And you're also going to have the muscles in the middle of your back and down towards the middle of your back working as well, okay? You'll find that your forearm muscles get engaged. They get in the game because why? You're press, placing pressure on the palms of your hands. Your fingers are hanging off the edge. And they have to, you have to have a neutral wrist so that you don't end up hurting yourself. So make sure your fingers are nice and long. Your wrist is neutral, and you'll notice that as you do more dips, the definition of these muscles, okay, right up in the outer part of your bicep, okay, start to define themselves, start to chisel out a little bit. So dips are a great exercise for when you want to wear those sleeveless tops, 
and when you want to have those backless outfits. All right, let's try it again. Another set, palms down, fingers hanging off the edge, heels are up, just walk your feet out to slide off, and slide down the front of the bench and push up, okay? Inhale, exhale, look forward. Good, use your breath to come up if you feel like it's a struggle. And don't feel that you have to go all the way down. You can just dip a little bit. It's just it's what it's called. It's a dip. You're taking your glutes and you're dipping them. You're bending your elbow. You have to bend your elbow. Good. Two more. One more. Good. And sit down and rest. So you might be saying, Paula, I have shoulder issues. I have carpal tunnel on my wrist. This doesn't work for me. That's okay. You don't have to do dips. What you can do instead is you can do what's called tricep extensions. And I'm going to show you that with my weight. And I want you to try it with me. What you're going to do is get your weight and preferably something that's a little bit heavier than what you want to use, than you're used to using. You're going to turn your arms backward, okay? This is called a tricep extension. You're going to stand up nice and tall. And whether you do it alternately or you do them together, you're going to simply make a small move and press the weight backward, okay? Press, 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 okay? And breathe. Small movement. If you want to do them alternately, then you're going to press right, press left. Press right, press left. Okay, and rest. What I don't want you to do is, I don't want you to swing your arms. So, when you have the weight, I don't want you to do press and swing forward and press and swing forward, okay? That is not a good move to do with weight. You are placing yourself in the position to be hurt. So, make sure you have good form before you do it. So, let's do another set. Ready? And together or Individually, make sure you do the same amount on each side. Here we go. Three, two, one. Very good. Lower your weights down. Very good. Shake it out if you need to because we did quite a bit arm stuff. Seem like arm moves, which they are, but they're really helping out your back as well. Now we're going to go back to our plank for a couple of rounds of 15 seconds. So get into your plank position. After you grab some water, should you need it. And you might find that you started out with your arm plank and now because of what we just did, you might think, I need to go to the elbow. That's okay. All right? All right. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Tuck your toes, extend the legs. And let's hold 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Knee down. Child's pose. Enjoy the stretch. Take at least two deep breaths. Very nice. All right, let's come back to our second round of 15-second plank, okay? Choose whatever position you like. Tuck your toes. And if your knees are down, lift your knees. Otherwise, drop down to your knee position. And let's hold it 15 seconds. And breathe. Think about the good things for three, two, one. One, drop your knee, child's pose. Inhale, exhale. One more. Good. Our next 15 second spin of planks. Tuck your toes and up and hold. Make 
make sure your belly button is pulled tight towards your spine if you're feeling your body shake not to the point where you feel like you're gonna pass out but just a little shake a little quiver that's a natural sign that you're building up muscles three two one knees down child's pose Very nice. All right. Now we're going to go into an exercise right here on our mat. We're not going to get up from here, but we're going to do something called swimmers. Swimmers is a great exercise for the entire back. It's a gentle exercise for those, especially for those who might have lower back issues and are afraid to do any back exercises to aggravate it. I must forewarn you that back exercises don't initially make your back feel good, okay? You are going to feel some tension in the areas that we worked. Meaning, if you have lower back issues and we did some back strengthening exercises today and you feel at the end of the night a little sore, a little tense, I encourage you to use our recovery methods of icing. So ice it, heat it as you need to, make sure you're stretching regularly. And even if you don't have any lower back issues and you still feel that tension down there, ice it, heat it, roll it out, stretch it out, okay? Because all that is is that sometimes those muscles are underused and then we decide to use them and then it's almost like you turn on a lamp in a very dark place and it's been dark for a very long time. Things are going to creak. You're going to notice that some things are not as the way you left them and so... It's a part of the process, okay? So with that being said, let's first of all get down onto our belly. When we get onto our belly, we're first going to try something um, where we're just holding the pose, okay? Now, some people may call this a star. Some people may call this pose part of the swimmer pose. Whatever the case may be, we're going to extend our arms and our legs at the same time. We're going to elevate, elevate them briefly off of the mat. Hold them for five seconds and then lower them back down again, okay? All right. So make sure you have enough space. I'm going to lay down onto my mat, onto my tummy. My feet are going to be at least hip width apart. My arms are going to be at least wider, a little bit wider than my shoulders. And what I'm doing is I am preparing myself to look like a water bug, or a splat, or a star, however you want to term it. When we lift, we are going to take a breath, we're going to inhale, and we're going to exhale and lift, and we're going to hold it for five, four, three, two, one, then we're going to inhale and lower back down. You're going to press your pelvis into the mat. That'll help you to squeeze your glutes, taking pressure off of the lower back. And you're going to brace your core. When we brace the core, everything comes into, comes to work, okay? Everything plays its part, and you are supported in many ways as you hold this pose. Don't forget to use your breath, because your breath is kind of the initiating uh sequence or the initiating thing for your body to know we're about to do something big let's all be on guard to get ready to help all right so arms up stretched out <clears throat> palm is down fingers are stretched and legs are wide not too wide just a little bit wider than that than the hips and here we go and inhale exhale lift and hold it for five four Three, two, one. Inhale, lower down. Very good. Kiss the mat, but don't actually kiss it. Pretend to kiss it. Okay? Let's do that one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Let's lift. Good. Press that core into the mat for five, four, three, two, one. Good. And lower back down. Make sure your gaze is always looking at the mat. Now we're going to create some movement or try some movement with this exercise. So when we lift off of the mat, we're then going to pretend that we are a person learning to swim, but we feel like we're drowning. So what we're going to do is we're going to splash and flail 
all over the floor, but in a controlled manner. So it's gonna look a little like this. We are in our start pose. We're gonna inhale, we're gonna exhale and come up, and then we're gonna flail, okay? We're gonna wiggle our arms up and down, we're gonna wiggle our legs up and down for about 10 seconds, and then we're gonna stop, and then we're gonna lower down back to the mat for rest, okay? Here we go, let's try it. Inhale, exhale, lift, and let's wiggle. Arms, legs, up and down for another five, four, three, two, one, stop, and then lower down. Let's try that again. Inhale, exhale, lift, and let's pretend we're splashing. Splash the arms, splash the legs. Five, four, three, two, one stop, and then lower down. Now here is a regression. If you feel arms and legs are too much, then let's just do the arms. So let's try it together. Legs remain on the mat. We're gonna inhale, and we're just going to lift and hold for five seconds. Exhale, lift, hold for five, four, three, two, one, lower down. You should have felt a nice, Muscle tense up in the middle of your back, but in a comforting way, not in a terrible, painful way. And just those muscles really contracting and holding the poles. Now let's try our legs. Inhale, exhale, lift, and hold for five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Muscles in the lower back got tense, they contracted, they held the, the the pose and then they lower down. All right, let's try a contralateral movement. So what we just tried, we tried two movements, just the arms, just the legs, just holding. Now we're gonna try the left arm with the right leg, lifting and then lowering down. We've tried this before, but we tried it on our knees. Now we're gonna try it flat on our tummy, okay? So we're gonna inhale, and we're gonna exhale and lift the left arm and the right leg while keeping the right arm and the left leg on the mat. Just hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, don't expose your chest when you lift. So when you lift, you should not be turning over to the side. You should keep your chest on the mat, your pelvis on the mat. So anything from your chest to your pelvis should stay on the mat. Your arms and your legs can come up off of the mat as much as you're able to do so. Now let's lift our right arm and our left leg. Let's inhale and let's exhale and lift and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Good, now let's place our hands on the outside of our chest and let's come to a child's pose. I wanna talk for about 10 seconds. Inhale and exhale. Again. Good, come on up. Now what we just did is we did a back strengthening exercise. Know that you don't have to lift the arms and the legs at the same time. You can do just the arms or just the legs or you can do contralateral movements, so opposite sides of the body. You're gonna do the right arm and the left leg or the left arm and the right leg. You can lift them at the same time or you can practice doing a movement or adding repetition to it. So lifting up and down with a contralateral movement or just the arms or just the legs, okay? So know that you have options. Try each one and see which one works best for your body. Great. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a stretch to stretch out the parts that we worked, as well as stretch out the surrounding muscles that contributed to the work. And the first thing we're gonna start with is a, cat, is a cat stretch. I love the cat stretch when I'm working out my back muscles because it just seems to get every muscle in my back. And I can hold it for as long as I want to before coming to a flat back. But know that you definitely wanna hold uh, stretches for at least 15 seconds. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, Palms are flat, fingers are spread wide. We're looking down at the mat. 
We're going to inhale and we're going to exhale to round the back. Inhale and come back to flat back. Good. Again, exhale. Inhale. Make sure your hips do not drop to the mat when you come back to a flat back with a long spine. Exhale. And one more. And inhale. Very nice. Okay, let's do our... Um, Stretch where we twisted one side of our body. So we're going to have one knee forward. My left knee is forward. Both hands are going to be on the inside of my leg. I'm then going to take my outside arm. I'm going to swing it up. And I'm going to look up at that arm. Pressing on the inside of the front knee. Exposing my chest. Breathing. And let's bring that arm down and let's switch the legs. Now my right leg comes to the front. Both hands come to the inside. And outside arm, swing it up. Bring that arm down, very nice. Now we're gonna bring this leg back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up the best way we know how. If that means rolling back onto your heels and then coming to a standing position, great. If that means for you, placing one knee forward, coming up to a half stand, okay, or a one knee or proposed position, and then placing your pressure on the meaty part of your thigh to push that back leg up, and grabbing onto a wall to help you bring the back leg forward, then that's fine as well. Let's do our hip hinge. Inhale, and we're gonna exhale, run our fingers down the front of the legs. Good, hold it here for a second. When we feel like the muscle is relaxed, we're gonna come down a little bit deeper, stretching the back of the legs, as well as the lower part of the back. And as long as we're not getting dizzy, we're going to inhale and we're going to exhale and we're going to roll up one vertebrae at a time. And we're going to inhale and we're going to reach up, pushing down on our toes, lifting our heels up, pulling our belly button in before we exhale and bring our heels down and lower ourselves down into a hip hinge position again. Getting a little bit closer and a little bit deeper into the stretch, holding it, feeling mild discomfort, breathing, getting oxygen and life to the muscles we have used, as well as to the muscles that are still intact. <laughs> and we're going to exhale and come up and roll the shoulders back. Good. Three, two, and one. Let's roll the shoulders forward and breathe. One more. Good. Now we're going to walk out to, in yoga, I believe it's called triangle pose, but I like to call it an inchworm. So, you're going to make sure your feet are underneath your hips. You're going to do your hip hinge. And now you're going to walk your hands out as if you're walking out to a plank, which you can walk to a plank first, excuse me. And then, as you walk yourself back, you're going to only walk back as far until your heels touch the mat. And your head is tucked between your arms and your arms on the outside of your ears. 
and you're looking back between your feet and you're holding and enjoying good before you walk your hands back out into the plank position one more time hold it inhale now exhale walk your hands back drop your heels inhale and exhale one more and walk your hands in and roll yourself up one vertebrae at a time great all right let's do our three breaths so let's inhale and exhale inhale Exhale, inhale, exhale. Great job today, working on your back muscles, strengthening those muscles, and even awakening some of those muscles. Great job. Continue keeping up the great work that you're doing because you're doing it for you. And remember, progression, not perfection, so keep on progressing. See you next time and bye for now.